Tunisia, the Arab world's beacon of light for women's rights, celebrates today, March 8, International Women's Day. In Tunisia, women's rights gained visibility after the 1956 independence. Throughout his 30 years of rule, Habib Bourguiba, Tunisia's first president, strove to present himself as a champion for women's rights and equality. On some points, Tunisia seemed even more progressive than Western democracies. Tunisian women acquired access to birth control in 1962, three years before the United States Supreme Court struck down laws that banned contraception. And in 1965, abortion was legalized, this time eight years before the United States. Women gained access to political life through voting and to new job sectors, Despite these achievements and Bourguiba's modernist rhetoric, women's empowerment still face challenges. Under Bin Ali, progress for women's rights followed the same top-down approach. Grassroots activists faced many obstacles as they tried to organize and fight for their cause. قبلنا العطا جانفي كان صعب جدا ان نخرطوا في 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 جمعيات وجمعيات حقوقيه انتم ما تعرفوا الكل كانت مضطهده خاصه مجلس الوطن القريات اللي الناس الكل كانت تحب تكون موجوده فيه لكن مع الاسف كان يغلق المقر نتاعو The Code for Personal Status is the keystone for women's rights in Tunisia. This series of progressive laws passed in 1956 under Bourguiba guarantees de jure equality between women and men. A point of pride for many Tunisians, it is arguably the most progressive piece of women's rights legislation in the Arab world. The Personal Status Code is more notable for what it rejects rather than what it allows. It banned polygamy, established a minimum marriage age of 18 for both women and men, and allowed women to file for divorce. The Code of Personal Status was amended several times, moving towards more legal equality for women and men, but this did not always translate into de facto equality. <laughs> From the streets to the seats of the National Constituent Assembly, women were active in the Tunisian Revolution and in the ensuing democratic transition process. On January 14, 2011, women from all backgrounds took to the streets of Tunis to protest the dictatorship, joining their voices to men's and shouting, Degage. Like their male peers, they demanded dignity, liberty, and fair access to opportunities. <laughs> حقوق النساء والحقوق السياسية العامة الديمقراطية والحريات والعدالة الاجتماعية. Despite this active participation, 
Some prominent female activists have expressed concern about the future of women's rights in post-revolutionary Tunisia, where everything is being redefined. الحضور المرأة في التأسيس كما قلت ونزيد نعودها ما هوش صوري ما هوش مجرد عدد بل هو فعلي. In the following October 23rd elections, women accounted for 46% of registered voters. At the same time, a survey conducted by the International Foundation for Electoral Systems found that 66% of female voters were unable to correctly identify the type of elections they were participating in, against 48% for male voters. Although electoral lists of each participating party were obligated to have a one-to-one women-to-men ratio, women represented only 7% of candidates placed at the head of the list. ما حتى حد يرفع قضية قدموا للقضية هذيك سهروا عليه واللي يدافعوا على الحكاية هذي يعرفوا أن المجتمع التونسي ولا النساء التونسيات مستحيل أنا نقبوا خلاف ذلك نحس قدامي إنسا سياسي مع تمرأة سياسية قاعدة تنمو قاعدة تتعلم Now that the political space has been opened up there is more room for grassroots reform and change on all levels Women's rights will benefit from this new space as women begin to take these matters into their own hands.